Hi, boss. In some areas, women are using charcoal for their everyday life routine of cooking for the family. Their cooking practices are not good for their personal health, neither for the indoor and outdoor air uh, quality in some areas, and of course also not very good for the uh, Ugandan forests. It is not that these women are unaware of these facts, but they are locked in into this practice of cooking since their low incomes do not allow for the use of cleaner cooking technologies or better resources for generating the energy needed in the cooking practices. NGOs, CBOs and women's groups, in particular informal settlements, have engaged in efforts to improve cooking practices in the sense of trying to make them healthier and more sustainable. However, so far, these social and technological innovations have not resulted in a su successful transition in the cooking practices. Alternatives for charcoal and improved cook stoves have not managed to attract many users. One explanation for this is the lack of sufficient income to finance the stove and charcoal alternatives. Improved cook stoves cost five times more than the conventional stoves that are currently in use. Therefore, they are very expensive. However, there is more to this than just the lack of money. So which are the non-economic factors that prevent the successful penetration of cleaner technologies in the cooking practices in the slums? Uh, well, one factor is related to the issues of culture and taste. So the taste issue is quite simple. People are used to a specific smoky flavor that comes with cooking with charcoal. In fact, uh, charcoal stoves are used to cook matoka in upscale households as well as in households in informal settlements. There is actually a saying that uh, there is no way I will cook matoke on a gas stove. But other non-economic issues also play a role. For example, when the cooking is done and how long it takes is an important issue. Cooking is part of many social practices that together make up a day in Kampala. So if one practice, which is cooking in this case, changes, the overall rhythm or temporal structure of the day can change in a way that some may find undesirable. Uh, thirdly, the practice of cooking with charcoal is rooted in a wider set of socio-economic arrangements that have been developed over a long time. The supply chain of charcoal and people who depend on it for, life, for their livelihoods is one such factor. Many people depend on charcoal production, distribution and selling for their income. This charcoal infrastructure is the key infrastructure for energy in Kampala slums, just as gas and electricity lines are for developed cities. Other types of energy like gas or electricity are still in development so far as socio-technical systems go, thus they are unavailable for informal settlements. This makes it very difficult for people in informal settlements to switch to them now. So for now, cooking with charcoal remains persistent as a socio-technical system in Kampala's homes. For one, it is cheaper than other alternatives, and materially speaking, it is easier to access and use with existing materials such as stoves. Charcoal also remains persistent because socio-culturally it is what people have known for a long time. They attach particular meanings and value to cooking with charcoal. Therefore, a transition from cooking with charcoal is not only the transition of one cooking practice, but the transition of a whole energy nexus with its mutual interdependencies among different parts of the charcoal chain between consumers, sellers, distributors and producers. So the discussion with Betty and the interview with Agnes from Creek together show us what we need to take into account when organizing the transition to healthier and more sustainable cooking in the slum areas of Kampala.